What's going on guys? This video is an intro to stock trading video that will hopefully provide some insight and information that's needed when you start stock trading. If you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. We have lots of unique content. Hit that big thumbs up for us. As a new trader, it's very important to have some necessary information to avoid making mistakes that could lead to a loss of money or a loss of a desire to trade. So in this video, you're going to learn stockbroker information, how the stock market works, fundamentals versus technicals, different ways to trade, and some basic terms that a new stock trader should know. Before you start investing, it's very important to know what the stock market is. I did a video on it, Stock Market Explained Simply, so if you guys wanna check that out, it's in the description below. But basically, the stock market is a market in which shares of a particular company are bought and sold by different people, depending on supply and demand. A lot of the stock market is based on perception or fear. Worldwide news, current events, political issues, but really the stock market goes off of where money goes. If money leaves, typically stocks go down. If money comes in, typically stocks go up. One quick piece of advice for new traders, only put money in the stock market that you can afford to lose. You do not wanna face financial hardships because you put money in the stock trading. As a new trader, you're also going to make a lot of mistakes. I still make a lot of mistakes. But overall, if you have a system and you know the basics, you can limit the mistakes that you're gonna make. So within the individual companies, there are a certain amount of shares of ownership that can be offered to the public. So basically, a stock like Apple has a certain amount of shares that can be bought. Most of the shares purchased are gonna be by institutions, big banks, hedge funds, uh, retirement accounts, things like that. Another piece of ownership of the company's shares is gonna be by insiders. That is the CEOs, the managers, all the higher ups of a company. The amount of shares available of a particular company is known as the stock float. A low float stock is a very volatile stock where it doesn't take too many shares to be sold or bought for the stock price to move. A high stock float is the opposite where there's lots of different shares available and the stock will not move as volatile. So the term shares outstanding in relation to stock flow is how many of those shares are owned. And of course, the price of those stocks goes up or down based on supply and demand. Just a little economics lesson for you. Supply is the amount of shares available for purchase. The demand is how many people and what price they're willing to pay for those particular shares is. All right, so now we're going to talk about something called the bid versus an ask. So when I first started trading, I thought that the price on the ticker was the price that you got when you hit the buy button. That's not the case. The stock market works off of something called a bid versus an ask. So the bid is simply the price that buyers are willing to pay. They're putting a bid out there to see if anybody will sell their shares. The ask is the price that the owners of the shares are willing to sell it to the buyers. So basically, the bid and the ask are matched up as closely as possible and you get the amount of shares that you want to purchase or you sell those amounts of shares. So here's a basic stock trade example of three different companies. I'm gonna apply $1,000 to three different stocks to show you what $1,000 can buy you. If you wanna figure out how many shares of a stock you can buy, you simply take the amount of money you have to invest and you divide it by the current price. That will give you the amount of shares you can buy with that money. Let's say I was going to buy Disney stock at $106. It's a little higher right now, but we'll use this as an example. I can purchase nine shares. To make $100 profit off of those nine shares of Disney stock, the Disney stock would have to go up $11.11. .11. All right, so the next stock is a penny stock bio that's trading at 55 cents. With $1,000, you can buy 1,818 shares of that particular stock. In order to make $100 profit, it would have to go up 5.6 cents. The third stock, General Electric, if it was trading at $8, I could afford 125 shares of General Electric. In order to gain $100 off of those 125 shares, I would need General Electric to go up 80 cents. Now keep in mind, stock movements are sort of relevant to the price. So that means penny stocks don't always fluctuate in high rates. The larger stocks have greater gains and losses a lot of times. So it's not uncommon for Disney or a Costco stock to go up a couple dollars or down a couple of dollars a day. But basically, if you want to figure out what you would make off a particular stock, you have to do your homework and do some math skills before you even start trading. 
figure out what price range of stocks you want to even look into. So in order to start stock trading, you need a broker. You can actually have a physical broker, somebody who manages stocks on your behalf, or you can do it yourself by using an online brokerage. Most people in this area use an online brokerage and do their own stock trading. Some of the online brokerages that are very popular include Fidelity, E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, Acorn is another new popular app. Be sure to check the minimum checking account requirements before you start trading and check if they have trade fees. Trade fees used to be as high as $15 per trade. Now, many companies have gone to $0 per trade, but you definitely wanna check all of the individual companies' trade fees and their policies. Another thing you wanna check with these trading platform companies is the hours and operations that you can do pre-market trading and after hours trading. They vary from company to company. All right, so now I'm gonna explain two important categories of stock trading analytics. First, we're gonna talk about fundamentals of stock trading. Fundamentals are the more old school, tried and true method of determining what stock to buy. This includes all tangible statistics to a particular company. For example, earnings reports, how much revenue a company is making, how much cash flow a company has. Cash flow is after all of its expenses and payouts, how much extra money does the company have to grow? Another fundamental is whether a stock is overvalued or undervalued based on the current stock price. Another example of a fundamental statistic is assets, how many assets a company has. So essentially the fundamentals are what you would look at if you're looking at a particular company for a longer period of time. You see something of potential in the company, something that you're gonna put money in and bank on the fundamentals to bring that stock up. You're gonna wait for those earning reports to be good and beat the estimates. Um, those are the kind of trades that will be fundamental based trades, typically longer term investors. Retirement accounts, banks, financial sectors use that type of trading more so than the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about, which is technical. Technicals are all about reading the charts and the action. How much is being bought? How much is being sold? What's the bid and the ask doing? Those are the kinds of things that deal with technical trading. So with looking at chart technicals, you're gonna look at general uptrends. You're gonna look at the day trends. You can look at the week trends, the monthly. You can look at the yearly, six months. There's a lot of different charts that you can look at to figure out uptrends and downtrends. So another important chart technical to know is the support versus resistance lines. The support is an imaginary line that people feel is a safe buy area. So for example, a stock might not be going below $1.57. It keeps hitting 157 and then it goes up. It's bouncing off of that support. That means a lot of people are putting in those bids at 157. On the flip side, you have something called the resistance. So if a stock is on an uptrend and it hits this wall and it can't go through it, like for example, $1.99, it will not get higher than that. It goes to 199 and then goes down from there. It's bouncing off of the resistance level. So that means there's a lot of people selling at 199, not a lot of people buying. If a stock generally breaks its support, it is viewed as bearish, although it could come right back up. If a stock breaks the resistance, is viewed as bullish, but again, it could go up and down. Um, the stocks are unpredictable at times, so keep that in mind. A lot of people base their trades off of charts and support and resistance levels. So again, chart technicals are more for swing trades or day trades, which I'll explain in a little bit. Fundamentals are typically viewed as long-term investment types of approaches. Of course, you can do a little bit of both. You can look at strong fundamentals and you can also look at how their charts are doing. All right, so I was mentioning some different types of trades. So we're gonna start off by discussing long-term trading. A long-term trader is somebody who is going to invest and not really pay attention to it because they're very confident and they'll check periodically and they're looking to invest for six months, years, um, Retirement accounts, mutual funds, those kind of things are typically long-term investments. They're looking at overall growth with the economy and the company's fundamentals. Swing trading is basically playing a chart technical or a fundamental earnings report coming up. So people are in it for a short amount of time, but not necessarily one day or two. 
So it could be a few weeks just to play a company before it has its earning reports. Day trading is very popular, especially in the modern formats of online trading. So day trading is just like what it sounds, buying a stock and selling that same exact stock that same trading day. Now you can only have three day trades within a five day trading period, or you'll be marked as a day trader, a pattern day trader. Many of these online platforms do things to protect you from making more than three day trades. Another type of investor is known as a stock short. So when people short a stock, they actually feel bearish about the company. So they're actually betting on the stock to go down rather than up. So of the different types of traders, I suggest that you figure out what type of trader you're going to be rather than just throwing money in. Maybe you have a little bit of a long-term plan. Maybe you have a short-term plan. Maybe you have a little bit of everything. You also want to figure out what sectors of stocks you'd want to trade, what level of stock price fits your budget. Those are all things you need to know before you start investing. All right, the most commonly used type of order is a market order. That means you're hitting buy or sell based on the current market price, but don't forget that the market price on the ticker is not necessarily what you're going to get just by hitting that button. It aligns the bids and the asks. If you want to sell or buy at an exact price, you're going to put something called a limit order. The limit order is a purchase or a sale of a particular stock based on a specific number, price, or better. So for example, if I wanna sell at 150, I put the limit order at 150, and if it reaches 150, it's gonna sell. If it goes a little higher, it might sell at 156, but it's going to sell at 150 or higher, or it does not get activated. Another very important useful tool is the stop loss or stop order. The stop loss is in the event that the stock tanks or drops, you cut your losses and you move on. It's set so that if you're not staring at a screen or watching the stock market, so by setting the stop loss, it's sort of a safety net in case that stock drops drastically. If doing penny stocks, I recommend having stop losses. So with that stop loss, if the price goes below that certain points, it automatically sells. There's also something called the trailing stop loss. Trailing stop loss is basically that if a stock goes up, the stop loss will also go up. So if you're not gonna be at your computer or your phone uh, checking the stock market, this might be an option too. You wanna do more research on trailing stop orders. Now there's pros and cons to all of these different orders. You can set a stop loss and cut some losses, but then that stock might go right back up. That's one of the risks you take. So each of these types of trades that you can use on these platforms has a purpose. You have to figure out what works for you and know how to use them. So my advice to you as a new trader, as I stated before, is to have a plan of action. That's something that I did not do for a long time. I just threw stuff in, I didn't do my homework, and I hoped that the stocks went up. Sometimes they did, but a lot of times they went down and I did not sell. I didn't set stop losses. I didn't have a plan as to what I would do if the stock went up or down. So basically what happened with me is a lot of stocks went up, I didn't sell and secure profit, they went right back down and I ended up losing money on a lot of those same stocks. I can't tell you how many times that's happened because I did not have a plan of action. Know what level of stock you wanna purchase, a $100 stock, a $5 stock, a penny stock. Figure out what type of trade you wanna make for that stock. Do you wanna day trade it, swing trade it, etc.? What is your goal profit for that stock? So while you're waiting for your money to clear in your stock broker account, I suggest practicing. Pretend that you have a certain amount of money and practice buying stocks and see how they do. Just chart it with a piece of paper. See if you win or lose. Just practice. This is gonna help you understand how the stock market moves, how these stocks are traded. That's something that a lot of new traders should do. Also read up on a lot of different methods and ways to make money on stock trading. Watch tutorials, videos. Another thing you wanna do is look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average and S&P and look out for news stories because they have a big impact on the stocks that you're going to buy. There's a sort of world crisis like the coronavirus or something like that. Oil prices may be drastically changing. So if you're going to invest in oil or short oil, that's something you'd wanna know. You'd wanna know that news. 
You also want to know when earning reports are coming out for a particular company. And you want to know if you want to stay in that stock during earnings because a lot of times stocks go up or down and it's kind of a gamble at the earnings report time. Learn as many of the fundamentals as possible. Learn how to read an earnings report. Learn how to use a stock screener. I did a video on Fidelity stock screener and I'll put that in the description below as well. Basically a stock screener like Fidelity or whatever platform you're using or Finviz is another good one. You can basically screen out stocks that you don't want and you can focus on things that meet your criteria. Price, earnings, growth, all of those things. All right, so in conclusion, I hope you found this video useful and informative. Remember, this was meant for new stock traders, information and tips to help you get going. You're going to win some and you're going to lose some. Do not get discouraged. Make sure you stick to your plan of action. And if your plan's not working, make some adjustments. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Hit a big thumbs up for me. And if you like this video, I have some other stock videos that you can check out. All right, guys, see you next time.